Hey everyone, so this is gonna be a bit more of a new or inexperienced player type video, as you can probably tell by the title. Probably a video I should have made years ago, but, you know, oh well. If you know how to fight against champions already, I don't think you're gonna get that much out of this video. Maybe you share it with some of your noob friends, I don't know. But I've been doing a lot of viewer gameplay analysis on stream, off stream, reading Reddit, all that kind of stuff. And one constant that I have seen is that some people just don't know how to actually fight champions. Like, the game kinda tells you, but not to the degree that I think it needs to. Like, not a full tutorial like I'm about to do here. And with the new champion stun effects given to us in Lightfall, this opens up a whole new world when it comes to champion stuns, which can really open up your loadout. So, let's learn how to stun and kill champions like a champion. I mean, it just writes itself, come on. Let's start with what is actually happening with the champion stunning process. Champions exist in three states, which I'm literally just making up. Active, stunned, and recovering. The active state is the enemy as it normally is. It's shooting you, it's engaged with you, you're fighting it, but it can also be stunned. The stunned state is after you stun the champion by whatever means. The champion is disabled, it doesn't attack, and is vulnerable to attack for a few seconds. The champion usually makes some kind of a noise indicating that it is stunned. The recovery state is where the champion goes back to acting as it normally does in its active state, but it cannot be stunned again until a specific signal is given off on the champion itself. This signal is when their glowing tendrils are no longer highlighted on top of their head. This really only applies to unstoppable and overload champions, as barrier champions don't really have much of a recovery state, and we'll go over why soon. Something to note, weapons can only have one anti-champion capability at a time. For example, a weapon cannot have both overload rounds and anti-barrier rounds at the same time, only one or the other. The one that takes priority is the one that either comes intrinsically on the weapon, like an exotic, or a seasonal artifact perk. For example, if you take overload SMG from the artifact, even if you proc some sort of an effect that would seemingly give you another anti-champion effect, like being radiant, your gun will remain with overload rounds and will not take on another role. We'll talk about the nuance of this as we hit each champion type. Speaking of anti-champion capabilities, in Lightfall, Bungie added many ways to fight against champions using subclass keywords like Volatile, Joel, Ignite. We'll go over what each of these effects do, but just note that some of these effects will be easier to come by than others. This is usually based on the perks offered in the seasonal artifact in a given season. For example, in Season 20, the keywords Ignite, Unraveling, and Volatile were all in high supply, which makes fighting against champions that are affected by those effects much easier. In other seasons, the perk offerings will change, and as a result, a champion that was very easy to fight in one season may become much more difficult to fight in another. Learning how to maximize the uptime on these subclass keywords to fight champions is key to your success. Otherwise, you're just going to be stuck on double primary and you're going to lose a lot of damage potential. Let's start with the easiest to understand champion, the Unstoppable Champion. Unstoppable Champions are usually enemies like Ogres and Phalanx or Incendiors that typically have very strong attacks. The main trait of the Unstoppable Champion is that they take dramatically reduced damage while in their active and recovering state, but otherwise do not recover their health. The number one mistake I see people doing when fighting these champions is that they are wasting their power ammo. They are attacking this champion in their active or recovering state. There are times and places to use ammo on Unstoppable Champs in these states, but for the most part, you want to avoid this until you really learn those times. You can tell if you're doing reduced damage by these italic red numbers popping up on non-crits, and also by the fact that you're really not dealing that much damage to the champion. When the Unstoppable Champion is in the recovering state where it cannot be stunned yet, the best thing you can do is just make sure you're not getting hit by it as there isn't a whole lot you can do until you can stun the champion again. This can be achieved by suspending the champion, freezing it, or just the old-fashioned method of running away. Unstoppable Champions can be stopped in many ways, contrary to their name. The first way is by picking up an artifact perk for a specific weapon and then using that weapon to stun. 
If it's with a primary, you'll typically need to aim down sights first, get a shot to charge up indicated by the buff on the left side of the screen, and then shooting the champion. With different weapons, there may be different rules to stun the champion, but it will generally involve shooting the champion with the weapon. There are a few exotic weapons that have unstoppable rounds built into the gun, like Bastion, Malfeasance, and Leviathan's Breath. These don't require any special mods to activate, just point and shoot. With Lightfall, subclass keywords are now able to stun champions, and unstoppable champions are the most susceptible to these effects out of all champions in the game. To stun an unstoppable champion with some sort of subclass effect, you can do the following. Arc blind them, like with a flashbang grenade or maybe the arc fragment spark of beacons. You can solar ignite them. This will most commonly be done by a Starfire Protocol Warlock. But for example, in season 20, there are, or were, seasonal artifact perks that enabled you to ignite targets with firebolt grenades much easier than normal. The Root of Nightmare's Raid Exotic Conditional Finality can also ignite stun an unstoppable champion. You can shatter them with stasis, that means freezing a target and then dealing enough damage to break the ice, so to speak. Chill Clip is a great weapon perk to use, most notably on stasis fusion rifles, as two shots will freeze any target if you're in the top half of the magazine. But you can also use something like Glacial Grenade. And again, the Conditional Finality Shotgun's Freeze Shot can also stun an Unstoppable once the target is shattered. Probably the easiest way to stun an Unstoppable is with a Strand Suspend effect. These are quite plentiful across all classes, although Hunter and Titan have it the easiest. Important to note that just because you stun an Unstoppable Champion with a Suspend does not mean they are vulnerable the entire time they are suspended. The suspend effect lasts longer than the stunned state, so you may find yourself shooting an active or recovering unstoppable champion even though it is still suspended. Suspending them just means they aren't able to attack you. Suspend is in very high supply regardless of seasonal artifact perks, which is what makes it a very effective tool for unstoppable champions, to the point where if you practice a strand build enough, you don't even need an unstoppable weapon in your loadout. Check out my strand builds for more information. Again, you should not waste any special or power ammo on these targets while they are outside of their stunned state as your damage will be very, very bad. The only times I recommend burning some of this ammo is when the champion is very close to finisher range and we'll talk about finishers towards the end of the video. Next, we have barrier champions. These are typically colossus, servitors, knights, hobgoblins. The main trait of the Barrier Champion is that when it has about 80% of its total HP remaining, the champion will shield itself and start to recover its health if their shield does not receive any damage. This shield will last a few seconds and then will come down if not dealt with. The champion will then attempt to shield themselves again around that 80% HP threshold. If the shield is broken, the champion enters the stunned state where it will be stunned for a few seconds. Barrier Champions don't really have a recovery state as the time in between them recovering from the stun and attempting to reshield still leaves them open to attack. They will typically deploy their shield a few seconds after exiting their stunned state if they are below 80% HP. Otherwise, Barrier Champions are able to be attacked at any point, and if you have enough burst damage, you can kill them before they even put up a shield. The number one mistake I see here are people not being proactive with their anti-barrier capabilities or using weapons or abilities that cause some sort of delay in switching to an anti-barrier weapon. Barrier champions start regenerating their health almost immediately after deploying a shield, meaning that if you are reacting to a barrier shield, then by the time you swap weapons, their health is going to fully regenerate. Knowing the timing of when to take out your gun or simply wait for a shield to come up will come with experience. Generally speaking, the closer the champion gets to 80% HP, the more you want to be ready with anti-barrier rounds. After a barrier champ is stunned and recovers from the stun, be ready again with your anti-barrier capabilities. Note that any damage to the shield will stop their health from regenerating, so if you don't have the firepower to fully take down the shield, any damage against the shield is better than nothing. Barriers can be shot down by any weapon that has anti-barrier rounds, most notably found in the Seasonal Artifact. Simply get the perk and shoot your gun, there is nothing you need to charge up or prepare. There are quite a few amount of weapons that get anti-barrier rounds built in. Arbalest, Wish Ender, Revision Zero, Ariana's Vow, and The Lament. If you're using one of these, you don't need any sort of a mod. 
You can also get around barriers by the following subclass keywords. Becoming Radiant will give all weapons anti-barrier capabilities, and yes, this does include Well of Radiance. The easiest way to become Radiant is by using the Ember of Torches fragment using your melee to make you Radiant. I'm going to reiterate a point that I made at the start of the video here, though. Radiant will not overwrite anti-champion perks from the artifact or anything built into your guns. If you are using an SMG with Overload or a Scout with Unstoppable, if you become Radiant, those weapons will not switch to being anti-barrier. If you want anti-barrier capabilities, the weapon must have no anti-champion perks on them at all. Volatile Rounds also have anti-barrier capabilities. Volatile Rounds are a bit harder to come by unless it's in the Seasonal Artifact perk pool where it could be very easy, but Echo of Instability can provide them if you're looking to go this route, although it's not the most reliable. Hunters also have Jur Falcon's Hauberk as an easy source of Volatile Rounds. Finally, Unraveling Rounds have anti-barrier capabilities found through Thread of Propagation or potentially in the Seasonal Artifact. Freeze effects do not technically stun barrier champions, but it will stop them from attacking. Just note that once a barrier champion is unfrozen, they pretty much always immediately try to put up a shield. This makes freeze an unreliable way to fully deal with barrier champions. A note about strand suspend. While suspend doesn't technically stun barrier champions, nor does it get rid of their barrier, suspend can be used against them to prevent them from using their barrier in the first place. You can suspend a champion and then kill them before they have a chance to put up a barrier at all. But just know that if they come down from the suspension, they will likely immediately put up a barrier if they are below 80% health. Suspend is so good against anti-barrier champions that much like Unstoppables, if you have good knowledge of suspend builds, you don't need to bring an anti-barrier weapon into an activity. Meaning, if you're in an activity with Unstops and barrier champs, you could not bring a single anti-champion weapon and be okay with enough skill. This is why taking advantage of subclass effects for champions is so important and was such a great change to the game. Finally, the champion that people struggle with the most, Overload Champions. These are most notably Minotaurs, taken Hobgoblins, Captains, with Captains being able to teleport every second, making them very annoying to fight against. Overloads are stunned after applying Overload Rounds to them. Overload Champions do have a recovery phase, and it is during this time that they will attempt to regenerate their health. In order to prevent this, you must continually apply Overload Rounds or some sort of Overload subclass keyword to the Overload Champion. If you don't, they will regenerate all of their health. The biggest mistake I see people make against Overload Champions sounds really stupid, but it's just the fact that people don't know how to actually fight against an Overload Champion properly. Yes, you can stun an Overload Champion very quickly with Overload Rounds, but patience is the key with Overloads, as you must continuously reapply Overload to keep them from regenerating their health. This means whenever you stun an Overload Champion, you don't get as much time with your harder-hitting weapons to kill them. You can do a little bit of damage, but then you need to swap back to your Overload weapon or your Overload effect and start damaging them again before or as they are entering the recovery phase, tagging them with overload rounds to prevent their health from regenerating. Otherwise, you're going to do a bunch of damage, and it'll all be healed, and then you'll get mad, and you'll say overload rounds are broken, but they're not actually broken. You just don't know how to fight against overload champions, but that's okay. That's why you're here. Overload champions can be stunned with seasonal perks, but the rules are different depending on the weapon. If the perk is for autos or SMGs, you'll need to continuously shoot the champion waiting for the overload round to proc itself and then hit the target. If you're on a bow, one shot will normally be okay. If you're on a sword, you will need a couple of hits to stun. They can also be stunned with the exotic weapons Divinity, La Monarch, and Thunderlord, no mods needed. When using Divinity, it's essentially an instant stun. The advantage of using something like a sword is that you are continuously applying the overload effect to a champion, so their health will never start to regenerate as long as you are hitting them. This technique also applies to autos and SMGs and bows and whatever else, but the drawback is that they don't deal as much damage. However, the drawback of using a sword is that you're using a sword, which can leave you vulnerable in other parts of an activity. In terms of subclass effects, overloads are the most resilient, as most of the effects are a bit harder to come by on average. For example, arc jolting a champion is a pretty rare thing outside of having tools in the seasonal artifact. 
Jolt most notably comes from Volt Shot, which can be tough to prepare against a champion, and from Spark of Shock. A great example for using Jolt would be on something like a Pulse Grenade with Spark of Shock. The Pulse Grenade hits multiple times, reapplying the Jolt effect every time, which resets the timer of when the Overload will regain its health regeneration effect, giving you more time to deal damage with a more powerful weapon to kill the Overload. Another cool thing about Jolt is that you can have a weapon that has its own anti-champion effect and Volt Shot at the same time. For example, I have the Scout Rifle with Volt Shot. Scout Rifles in this video have unstoppable rounds, but Volt Shot still works to stun the Overload because it's a debuff applied to the enemy versus something like Overload SMG not being able to turn into an anti-barrier SMG through the use of Radiant since Radiant is applied to yourself. Void Suppression is equally as uncommon, if not even rarer, most notably coming from Suppressor Grenade and the Titan Shield Bash attack. This is not something I would use as a primary method of overload stunning, but rather as a backup. Fortunately, Stasis Slow is much more easily found. Chill Clip will be the number one provider of slow, most notably on fusion rifles. Dusk Field Grenade also provides slow, along with the Bleak Watcher aspect on Warlock, having the turret shooting the champion. Chill Clip is going to be one of the most common, non-season perk ways to stun champions. Chill Clip can proc multiple times in the top half of a magazine, making it so you are continuously applying the overload effect to the champion, meaning you will keep resetting the health regeneration timer, and because Chill Clip is a debuff on the target, it is in a similar situation as Jolt, where your Chill Clip weapon can gain an anti-champion effect on top of the debuff it provides. This is why Chill Clip fusions are so strong. They can slow to stun overloads, they can freeze and shatter to stun unstoppables, or they can just stop an anti-barrier from shielding for a moment, and they can gain Radiant through other effects to pierce anti-barrier shields. With a Strand subclass and a Chill Clip weapon, you can handle all champions at the same time. Note that with freezes, just because an overload champion is frozen does not mean it won't regenerate its health. The rules still apply while the target is frozen or suspended. You must hit the overload champion with overload rounds to stop it from regenerating. And again, you have three very good exotics to stun overloads in Divinity, Le Monarch, and Thunderlord, although Divinity isn't as good as it used to be and thus isn't as needed, but it is still quite good. Le Monarch is great as the poison damage over time counts for overload rounds, so you're able to more reliably keep overload champions from regenerating their health. There are also some exotic armor pieces that provide champion stunning effects. Athras' Embrace provides unstoppable stun on Empowered Throwing Knife, using its exotic perk to get it. Secant Filaments provide overload disruption when standing in an empowering rift. And Second Chance on Titan gives anti-barrier for your shield throws. These are not the most popular choices for anti-champion needs, but they are there if you want them or if they get buffed in the future. Also, I missed Wave Splitter and Devil's Ruin in the video, and I'm not going to try to cram those in the sections, so just deal with it. Wave Splitter is capable of suppression when you fire the weapon at its maximum power for a sustained duration, which means it can stun overloads, and Devil's Ruin has Unstoppable built in. One final thing to note about champions are finishers. You should try to use a finisher on champions a good amount of the time for two reasons. The first is to just save ammo. Champions have a good amount of health and you can save ammo by doing a finisher for the kill. The second is because of Aeon Gloves. Each class has a pair of Aeon Exotic Gloves and using the Sect of Insight mod on the gloves makes it so you generate power ammo for your team every time you use a finisher on a champion. In higher end content, this will supply an almost unlimited amount of power ammo for your team, making gameplay much easier to tackle. So there you have it, the ultimate guide to handling and killing champions. Hopefully you learned a little something regardless of your skill level, but yeah, champions aren't as daunting of an enemy as you might think. You just need the knowledge to know what works and what doesn't. And once you know what's up, they're kind of a pushover. At least until you get to, you know, GMs or something. Then, not so much. If you have any of your own advice that you would like to drop on people, hit the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.